بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, Brothers and sisters This is a continuation of the series uh, Explaining the hadith of Jibreel عليه السلام When he came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم And asked him few questions about the definition of Iman, Islam, Ihsan, etc. And we started with the articles or pillars of Iman and we finished belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. And today we're going to address the second pillar, which is belief in the angels. The reality or essence of, of the angels, they are uh, creatures created by Allah Azza wa Jal. They're honorable and they're not described as females or males. They cannot be described as masculine or feminine. They don't eat and they don't drink. What is the implication of believing in the angels? Well, number one is that you must believe in their existence, that Allah created them and they exist. Number two, you must believe in the names that Allah Azza wa Jal had mentioned in the Quran or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in his sunnah, in the authentic sunnah. Number three, you must believe in the tasks that were mentioned in the Quran and the sunnah that have been allocated to the angels or to some of the angels to carry out. And finally, you must love the angels because they are Creatures of Allah Azza wa Jal who never disobey Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, denying or rejecting the existence of the angels renders a person a disbeliever because he breaks one of the pillars of his faith. Plus, he belies Allah Azza wa Jal and his words in the Quran where he mentioned the angels, some by name and some in general, as well as belying the Prophet ﷺ in his authentic sunnah. What were the angels created from? The, the Prophet ﷺ informs us, and this is reported by Imam Muslim. He said, uh, the angels were created from light, and the jinn were created from smokeless flame of fire. Uh, the size of these honorable creatures is something that's beyond perception. We, we cannot, uh, it's, it's beyond our capacity. Because Allah Azza wa Jal gave us limited abilities in our brains. And a lot of times what makes people deviate is that they try to go beyond the, the limited capacity Allah Azza wa Jal has set their brains to be at. And they try to go beyond that, and that's why they lose it. They, they deviate, they start rejecting and denying, and they go into atheism and this and that. However, we can uh, exemplify uh, to try to get an idea of the size of these honorable creatures of Allah. The Prophet وسلم, and this is reported by Abu Dawood and classed as authentic by Al Albani. He said, I was given permission to speak about one of the angels who carry the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. Speak about the scribe, that is. He said, the distance between his earlobe and his shoulder is a distance of a journey that takes 700 years to finish. Just the distance from the earlobe to the shoulder. Then you can imagine the size of the, uh, the angels, if that's only this part of the structure of that creature. Allah Azza wa Jal created them with uh, wings. As the Prophet Sallallahu informs us, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari, he saw Jibreel and he had 600 wings and he had filled the horizon, alayhi salam. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, Alhamdulillahi, فاطر السماوات والأرض جاعل الملائكة رسلا أولي أجنحة مثنى وثلاث ورباع يزيد في الخلق ما يشاء All praises due to Allah 
creator of the heavens and the earth, who made the, the angels messengers having wings, two, two wings that is, two, three, or four, he increases in creation whatever he wills. As Siddi, may Allah have mercy on him, said, This means that Allah increases in the number of the angels in his creation, and in creating more and more angels, and he increases the number of wings of the angels. What is the number? What numbers are we talking about regarding the angels? How many angels are there? Well, again, this number is something that only Allah Azza wa Jal knows. However, we can give an example to try to understand the huge number of these angels. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said there is something called Al-Baytul Ma'mur, a house in the heavens, in the seventh heaven. He said every single day 70,000 angels enter it and they leave it and they never go back to it. Meaning every day 70,000 angels enter to that into that house and then the following day new 70,000. So you can try to calculate the numbers. Uh, another example is what is reported by Muslim. Uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said on the day of judgment, Jahannam, the fire of hell, will come and it will be pulled. It will have 70 uh, bridles, each bridle having or being held by 70,000 angels dragging it or pulling it. Uh, when we're talking about sizes and, and numbers like this, subhanAllah, you can see um, the greatness of these angels. And they, their greatness reflects the greatness of the one who has created them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are the tasks? Remember in the beginning we said that the one of the implications of believing in the angels is to believe in the tasks that were allocated to them to be carried out. What are these tasks? Well, there are a lot of tasks that are allocated to different angels. Um, however, one thing that Allah Azza wa informs us in the Quran about the nature of these angels he said, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. They do not disobey Allah Azza wa Jal in what He commands them, but do whatever they are commanded to do. So, what are the tasks? There are many tasks, as I said. And they carry it out perfectly, fully, exactly, without reluctance, without questioning, and amongst these tasks are, some of them are uh, given the task of conveying the revelations from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Some are in charge of bringing rain down. All of that happens with the will and the command of Allah. Some put people to death. Some give life to people, meaning breathing the soul. And we'll get to that in, the, in one of the tasks. Uh, some are in charge of carrying the throne of Allah Azza Some go around searching for circles of Islamic teachings like we're doing now to attend and be amongst them. Some are in charge of uh, fighting with the believers. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the, the Quran, informing us about what happened in the Battle of Badr. In the Battle of Badr, now uh, the Battle of Badr was a very decisive battle uh, because it was the first battle, it was unprepared for or unintended to be a, a battle actually. Uh, they didn't have weapons, so on and so forth. And had the believers been defeated, then 
history would have been different. As Abu Bakr, uh, as uh, the Prophet ﷺ uh, supplicated Allah Azza wa Jalla, he said, Oh Allah, if this group of people, meaning him and his companions, were, were to be defeated, then you're, you'll not be worshipped on earth. Now, of course, this is his fear, sallallahu alayhi wa Allah Azza wa Jal told the angels, I, سألقي في قلوب الذين كفروا الرعب. I will cast terror in the hearts of the disbelievers. فضربوا فوق الأعناق. So strike them upon their necks. واضربوا منهم كل بنان. And strike them on their fingertips, on their toes, and uh, on the fingers, the, the hands and the feet. So the, the believers used to say, after the battle, that one of them would raise his sword to strike the disbeliever, and then suddenly his head would fly away, the disbelievers. And they wouldn't know what is going on until they were later informed by the Prophet ﷺ that the angels were fighting with. Uh, there is a keeper for uh, hellfire, and there is a keeper for Jannah. Uh, there are angels. And this is very thrilling, brothers and sisters. This is something that puts your mind and heart to ease. There are angels out there protecting us by the command of Allah. Allah says in the Quran, لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ مِّن بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ For each person, they have successive angels taking turns night and day, both before him and behind him. And they are in, in, they're in all directions, in front of you, behind you. What do they do? Protecting him with the command of Allah Azza wa Do you feel how uh, nice this is? You know, when you feel that you're protected against the jinn, against any evil that might strike you. Subhanallah, Allah Azza wa Jal sends these angels for our protection. This is how much Allah cares for me and you. What are the names of these angels? Do we have names? Do we actually have names mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah? Yes, of course we do. And whatever names we have in the Quran or in the Sunnah, we must believe, believe in them. And whatever names we don't know, which is a lot, then we believe in the existence of these angels regardless of us knowing or not knowing a name for them. The first and most honorable and the greatest, the highest in status and the loftiest in, la in rank amongst the angels is Angel Gabriel, Jibreel alayhi salatu alayhi salam. He is the one uh, having the task of conveying the Revelations from Allah Azza wa Jal to the messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal on earth. And he is strong. He's obeyed by the uh, other angels. And he is trustworthy as described by Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal says, عَلَّمَهُ شَدِيدُ الْقُوَىٰ ذُو مِرَّةٍ فَاسْتَوَىٰ the Qur'an was taught to him, meaning to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the one intense in strength, meaning Jibreel alayhi salam. One of soundness, strength in body and in mind. And he rose to his true perfect form when he appeared to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is informing us that he actually appeared to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his actual form, upon which Allah Azza wa Jal had created. And Allah Azza wa Jal describes him in another uh, set of verses in the Quran saying, إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ ذِي قُوَّةٍ عِنْدَ ذِي الْعَرْشِ مَكِينٍ مُطَاعٍ ثَمَّ أمين. Indeed, this Quran is the word of Allah delivered by Jibreel a noble messenger angel, full of power, held in honor by the Lord of the throne, obeyed there in the heaven by other angels, and is trustworthy. 
Another angel is called Mikael. And there are different ways of pronouncing this, uh, this name, as well as Jibril. Jibril is also uh, pronounced, and this is in the Quran, as Jibra'el. Mikael is also pronounced differently, Mikal and Mikael. And Mikael is the one in charge of bringing down uh, the rain and causing the plants to grow. And these two are the source of life for humans and for animals. Israfil is the one who is in charge of blowing the uh, Asur. Asur is the horn or the trumpet uh, in which he blows to cause the death of people. This is at the end of time. He will make a sound when he blows that is very terrifying and that would cause everything to go to death, to be put to death. And then Allah Azza wa Jal will bring people back uh, with his command. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal describes this uh, horn. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal says, ثُمَّ نُفِخَ فِيهِ أُخْرَى فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْظُرُونَ It will be blown again, and at once they will sta be standing, looking on. They will be anticipating, they will be terrified, not knowing what to expect and what's going to happen to them. We ask Allah's protection on that day. Allahumma ameen. And then, looking at these three, Jibril, Mikael, and Israfi. Jibril is in charge of the life of the heart and the soul because he's the one who brings revelations. And what would put life into our souls and our hearts if it's not revel if it's not the words of Allah Azza wa Mikael is in charge of giving life by means of water and plantation. And Israfil is in charge with this blow to make people rise in the, in the shape of their bodies. They will rise up. So these three complement each other. Alayhim salam. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his uh, opening dua in, uh, in the prayer, he used to supplicate Allah Azza wa Jal using the names of these three uh, angels. He would say, Allahumma Rabba Jibreela wa Mikaela wa Israfil. O Allah, the Lord of Jibreel, Mikael, and Israfil. Fatir al samawati wal ard the creator of the heavens and the earth. Alim al ghaybi wa shahada, the one who knows the seen and unseen. Anta tahkumu bayna ibadika fi ma kanu fihi yaktalifun. Indeed, you are the arbitrator between your slaves in that which they disputed. Ihdini lima khtulifa fihi min al-haqq bi-idnik. Guide me to the truth by your leave in that which they have deferred. Innaka tahdi man tasha'u ila sirat al-mustaqim for verily you guide whom you will to the straight path. The next is the angel of death. Now the angel of death is one, but he has helpers and supporters, other angels who come to finish the process of taking the soul of the person. Uh, these supporters, and this is mentioned in, in an authentic narration, when they descend, they descend with a uh, shroud from Jannah, and a perfume from Jannah, so that they would use it when it is the time of a pious slave of Allah, male or female. And on the other hand, when it's the time of a person who is going to be punished by Allah, whether a disbeliever or a disobedient Muslim, then they come down with the shroud from hell. We ask Allah's protection against that. Now, they would sit waiting for the angel of death 
to take the soul out. And as soon as he takes it out from the body, now they would be assist, uh, assisting, assisting the, the, uh, the, the, angel, the angel of death in taking the soul, removing it, making it come from the feet up until it reaches the throat and then the angel of death withdraws it. And then as soon as he takes it, he hands it to them and they put it in that shroud, wherever, whichever of the two it is. And Allah Azza wa Jal describes them saying, حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ تَوَفَّتْهُ رُسُلُنَا وَهُمْ لَا يفرطون. When death comes to any one of you, our angels take their soul and they never fail in their duty. Uh, a lot of times we connect, and this is, this is seriously wrong, we connect death to age or to illness. And to our surprise, we often, if it's not daily, maybe weekly, we hear about people who are young, healthy, nothing wrong. And suddenly they slept and never woke up. They went, went to work and they never made it back. Uh... I was told by one of my friends once that there is a, a pilot in the, uh, in the Air Force in one of the Muslim countries. Uh, they used to do training, periodical training. One day he came and he had his breakfast, which his wife had prepared for him uh, at the house, and he brought it with him. He said to the uh, guy in the cafeteria, he said, please keep this for me, warm it up, I'm just going to make my round and come down. He went up and he never made it down. He crashed. Healthy, young, nothing wrong, unexpected. So the preparation process for death should be something that is ongoing in our lives. Malik. Malik is the angel who is in charge of, or he is the keeper of the gate of hell. We ask Allah's protection. Allah says in the Quran, وَنَادَوْ يَا مَالِكُ لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكَ The people in hell will call upon Malik saying, O oh Malik, let your Lord Finishes off. It's too much torture, too much pain. So they they try everything to ease the pain, even if it means dying. But Allah said about uh, or described hellfire as well as Jannah as there is no death. In the book of Imam Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu said, when the people of Jannah take their places in Jannah and the people of hell, we ask Allah's protection, take their places in Jahannam. Uh, death will be brought in the form of a sheep and Allah azza wa will command Allah will ask, O oh people of Jannah, and they would look up and extend their necks to see. Allah would say, do you know this? They would say, yes, we know it. It's death. And then Allah Azza wa Jal will call upon the people of fire. Oh, people of fire, do you know this? And then they extend their necks and they look up. And they see it and they say, yes, it is death. Then Allah commands and it, become, it gets slaughtered. And a call is made. O oh, people of Jannah, it is eternity and no death after now. And for people of hell, O oh, people of hell, it is eternity. There is no death after that. So the attempt of asking Malik to ask his Lord, intercede with his Lord to put him to death is a useless, fruitless attempt. But this is what a desperate person does. 
ونادوا يا مالك ليقضي علينا ربك او مالك let your lord finish us off put an end to us قال انكم ماكثون he said no indeed you will remain eternally in him you will remain here eternally we ask allah's protection we ask allah's protection we ask allah's protection the keeper of jannah is uh, a name that is uh, a source of dispute amongst the scholars the name is ridwan sheikh al uthaymin rahmatullahi alayhi said this name has narrations that are not as strong uh, as in confirming the name as the name of Malik. Malik is mentioned in the Quran. Uh, Ridwan is mentioned in some narrations uh, about which scholars disputed and differed regarding the authenticity of these uh, of this name. Can we see? Uh, can the angels be seen? Yes. Uh, we mentioned earlier that the Prophet sallallahu saw Jibreel and he had 600 wings and he had filled the horizon. Well, this happened during the journey of Al-Isra and Al-Mi'raj when he ascended sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the heavens and was taken to Jerusalem. He saw him uh, the first time he said alayhi salatu salam, the first time that he saw Jibreel in his real form was at Cave Hira, and the second time he saw him in the heavens when he ascended in al, uh, the journey of Al-Isra and Al-Mi'raj, and this is reported uh, by Al-Bukhari. Uh, they take different shapes as well. As the narration we're explaining, he came in the form or a shape of a human being. What are the fruits of believing in angels well there are many things but we'll do the to, to the the uh, shortness of time i'll i'll try to be uh, short and brief uh, number one is that one by believing in the angels fulfills one of the pillars one of the articles of his faith one of the articles or pillars of his belief in allah azza wa the set uh that we mentioned, the six pillars or articles, this is one of them, and not fulfilling any of these renders a person a disbeliever. So he would be a person believing them would be fulfilling part of his faith, uh, the, the uh, setup or the group of articles of faith. Uh, believing in the angels puts more trust in the person's heart with regards to the message he believes in. All, all books, all messages, all divine messages that were received by the messengers were received through the channel of the angels. See, Allah Azza wa Jal, in, in, in this narration we're, mentioned, we're dis discussing, uh, the, the pillars we mentioned were belief in Allah, and then the angels, and then the books, and then the messengers. And this is the sequence that happens. You believe in Allah, from Him, He sends down angels with the message to the people on earth, to the messengers. So this chain puts a lot of trust, reassures the heart about the message that a person believes in. In, the, in our case, uh, and it is the only authentic case, it is the Quran, the message of Allah Azza wa Jal. And when we get to the belief in, in books, we will discuss what happened to other books. You cannot believe in Allah without believing in angels. You cannot believe in the message without believing in the angels because they're the ones who conveyed the message. So the stronger, firmer your belief in these angels is, the stronger and firmer your belief in the message that you believe in is because this is the sequence it came down to. Especially that we have the description of the one who conveys them, as we mentioned, he is strong, trustworthy, does not disobey Allah, he's obeyed by other angels. 
all these lofty qualities Allah granted him for this lofty mission. Now, he is the loftiest because of the message he comes down uh, with. And Muhammad وسلم, is the loftiest amongst the messengers because he's the one with the final divine message. Allah Azza wa favored the first as much uh, as well as he has favored the second, meaning Angel uh, Jibreel and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Another uh, fruit one harvests from uh, believing in the angels is that it makes his belief in the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal stronger. It increases his attachment to his Lord. When he sees the uh, type of creation, meaning the angels, and how noble, how strong, how huge, how large in number they are, he realizes the greatness. He understands the massive capability and ability of Allah Azza wa Jal in his creation and he becomes or he has full trust in Allah Azza wa Jal and his wisdom in how and what he creates subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are the impacts of believing in the angels? Number one, when you believe in the angels, in the existence of the angels, uh, you become well-mannered with them when you know that in different situations they're with you, around you, then you will be well-mannered lest they see you do something that is improper and lest they record against you what you do or say. Uh, it makes a person hasten to be present in places where they... Uh, are present like in gatherings of knowledge like this, as well as refrain from things that will make them stay away. As the Prophet ﷺ informed us, he said, angels do not enter a house in which there's a dog or a picture of a living being, whether that is a human being an animal, a bird, a fish, whatever. Anything like that will prevent angels from entering the house. One time, Gabriel, Jibreel alayhi salam was late, uh, or delayed rather, coming to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So when he came, he said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, what kept me? is that there was a, a puppy under a bed in the, uh, in the house. So the Prophet ﷺ commanded them to bring that uh, puppy out. Uh, being grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal. We should be grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal. When we believe in angels, we must be grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal. When you know that Allah Azza wa Jal has surrounded you with all of this protection, have subjected these great noble creations or creatures for your protection to guard you against evil, against devils, against the jinn. Why wouldn't you be grateful? The person who believes in the angels, who knows that he has raqib and atid, as Allah Azza wa Jal says, مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Never will he utter a word except that he has angels recording. If it's good, then it's recorded by the angel who records the good. If it's bad, then it's recorded by the angel who records the bad. And that, knowing that and believing in that, will make a person keen on not doing or saying something that would be recorded or could be recorded against him or her. Talking about belief in the angels, 
uh, is something that's very soothing to the heart. Uh, as a matter of fact, talking about any of the articles or pillars of faith is something that's soothing to the heart. It's reassuring, it makes the person more firm on his faith, makes him grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal that he has chosen him or her to be part of this great faith. The challenges are plenty. The deniers are a lot. The beliers are a lot. Those who cast doubts and, and suspicions and misconceptions are all over. And it's only the protection of Allah Azza wa Jal that make that makes us firm on this faith. We need to strive hard. The more you learn, the more you know about your Lord, the more you know about His creation, the firmer you become on this faith, the more you practice, the higher in rank in your belief you get, and the more worthier you become to the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal and the Jannah of Allah Azza wa Jal. With this I conclude, the time has finished. And inshallah, the floor is open for the next 15 minutes for questions by uh, the sisters. Jazakumullahu khairan.